just showed you was basic file shares. We went in, we provisioned a share. I went in and we set the NTFS permissions if we wanted to. We set the, set the share permissions and we also set the, uh, the offline caching. However, we haven't really put a whole lot of restrictions on here. If I went in and I said, okay, you can have read-write access. There's nothing in there to prevent people from putting their MP3 collection up there. There's nothing in there from keeping them from going in and just taking the entire hard drive. That's where we get into the uh, file server resource manager. Now, I was trying to install before because when I typically install file servers, I install all the options, but in this case, I didn't. And uh, so I'll show you how to add those. So we'll go back out to server manager. And inside of server manager, we are not going to add the role. We're going to add a role service. So we're going to go down and we're going to select um, file services. And down in file services, we say add role service. Now inside of here, we have all of the other options. When I first installed this, I selected file server. That's all that we have. But I also want to have the distributed file system, including the namespace and replication. We'll talk about DFS in just a little bit. Here is our file service or file server resource manager. This is also where we can install the services for NFS if we want to do uh, the network file system. We're not going to do NFS on this one. We have Windows Search Service, and we also have some 2003, as well as Branch Cache. We haven't talked about Branch Cache. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So we're going to grab that FSRS, S F S R M, <laughs> and it says, "All right, well, if you're doing NFS." Do you uh, want to create the, uh, if you're doing DFS, do you want to do create the namespace? We're going to do the namespaces now. We'll do that a little bit later. So we are going to go in and manage our NTFS volume. This is going to set up our, um, this is going to set up our quotas. So I'll say next. And then we will say, do I want to re re uh, put these in a certain location? By default, it goes into C, storage reports. What we're doing here is we're telling the administrator how much space is being consumed or we can also have this sent out by email. If we do it with email, I would go in and put my email address in here. But I also have to identify an SMTP server. Now, you got to be careful with SMTP. Exchange servers, by default, if you have a hub transport server, it does accept SMTP. But it is not going to accept it from just anyone. You would have to go in and modify your SMTP server to give this particular machine permissions to be able to drop off SMTP. So we're going to go ahead and clear that out. I'll say next, we'll say install, and it installs our additional role services. So we'll give that just a moment. And then over on page 207, we're going to talk about the file server resource manager. Now you have what's called management nodes. And look at all the cool stuff that we can manage. We can manage quotas, we can do file screening, we can do storage reports, classification, and then there's other tasks in there as well. So let's go ahead and show you how we can manage this. I'm going to hit close. And then, under Administrative Tools, we will have our File Server Resource Manager. Yay, there it is. All right. Now, the first thing that we're going to talk about is uh, we're going to get into our management nodes. First one is quota management. Now, Microsoft has had quotas in their systems for a while, but it was really basic and not very powerful. It was volume-based, and it's based upon file ownership, the SID that owns it, is a SID that has to deal with the quotas. And when you're dealing with quotas, um, it is um, based upon the uncompressed size of the file. When we talked about file compression and encryption and all that, remember that when you have a quota, if it is a compressed file, it is the uncompressed size. Because anytime you touch that file, the file system will automatically uncompress it, and then it consumes all that additional space. So you can go in and you can do quotas. Uh, here is our source path, source path. It shows that we're using 11%. Our limit is 127, and this is a soft quota, which means it's just going to report the quotas. It's not necessarily going to go in and lock your system down. Um, let me see if we have, I think we might have, let me just make sure. I don't want to jump around too much. Bum, bum, bum. We're going to be talking about disk quotas a little bit later, so we're not going to do disk quotas right at this particular moment. But another option that we have is file screening. This is on page 208, and we do talk about this. What file screening does, it allows me to identify the types of files that we will allow in this particular share. So for example, I can go under file screens, and it shows you any screens that I have. I'm going to create a brand new file screen, and then I will put the path in for the file screen. So I'm going to go in, 
into my C drive and I'm going to put this screen on Dropbox. Now the cool part about this is, is this file screen will help to eliminate people just storing their entire MP3 collection up in here. Or uh, maybe we're going to have graphics that people want to install up in here. We can go ahead and thin that out. So by default, we're going to block audio and video files. Or if we want to, we can say I want to block executables, I want to block images, emails, or just go ahead and monitor executable and system files. So I'll say block audio and video. And this is going to go in and it just says, okay, anything that's an audio file or a video file, we're not going to allow this to go in here. And we'll do notifications via email or event log, depending upon how what we, on what we have set up. Now, you can also do this based upon a custom file property. So I'll open up the custom properties. And now I can go in and I can say active screening. Active screening means that if you try and put that file in there, we're just going to refuse it. Nope, can't come in here. Sorry. We can also do passive screening, which means you can put the files in there, but we're going to write down, oh, by the way, this is a list of all your MP3s and AVI files. And then we can go through and we can specify exactly what we're looking for. So I can say audio and video. I can say email files. I can say image files. Um, I can go in and I can say text files, web page files, and I can block all that stuff out. So now if you try and drop anything in there, something's going to happen. What's going to happen? Well, I can go in and I can do an email. I can send, send an email to the following address. I can say administrator email, or I can say also to the user who attempted to save the file, have a little bit of text in here, oop, unauthorized file from, and then the violated file group put in text, you tried to save this type of file on this particular path, which violated this particular, and you can just go ahead and put uh, whatever it is that you'd like. You can also put additional email headers in there, froms, tos, blind carbon copies, reply to. You can also insert a whole bunch of uh, variables like the admin email, source file owner, and source owner, uh, source to owner. So uh, you can really customize this type of reporting. You just need to make sure that you have your SMTP server identified in the system, otherwise it won't be able to do that. We can also go in and we can say I want to send the stuff to an event log. And again, you can customize this text and insert whatever variables you want. You can also run particular commands. Maybe if you put MP3 files in here, I'm going to move them into a different folder. Maybe I have a folder just for MP3 files. Uh, when it runs, you can run any type of script, any type of command line. You would give it a, a working directory if you would like. And you can run this under a variety of security conditions. You can say local service, network service, or local system. Then we also have a very robust reporting. We can generate reports. Uh, this is very cool. One of the big problems that we have with, uh, with network sharing is a lot of times it's just chaos. We have 27 copies of the same file up there eating up the space, and we don't know that these files are there. So one of the big reports that we have is duplicate files. And it's going to go through and check the entire path. Hey, I have two files that are exactly the same name and the same size. And then it would be up to the administrator to decide what they're going to do. You can email these reports. By default, they are going to go into the local drive. Or you can say, send them to a user who tried to save the unauthorized file. So you can pick and choose how you want this to go. So this gives you a lot of control. Now, if you don't like, the configuration options that they have, we do have file screen templates. These are block audio, email, executable image files, or monitor systems. You can do that. We can also go through and create file groups. The file groups simply identify the extensions associated with a particular type of file. So for example, I like to use auto hotkey. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to say auto hotkey scripts, A-U-T-O-H-O-T, -O -O hotkey scripts. And then I can go in and I can identify particular files. So I can say uh, this is going to be an asterisk dot ahk. So I can add that. I also have the ability to exclude files if I would like. So I can say anything that has uh, dug dot ahk, we will go ahead and not include that in our restriction. So you can get very, very granular on how you want these files to be placed. And then you can use these particular file groups to identify exactly what it is that you're trying to go through and do.